All right, folks, before we begin, there's two quick things I need to address. Uh, just understand, I do this all day, every day, so I know the common questions a lot of you are going to have about this device, and two of them I would like to address right off the bat. First is a very common question people have, will this back up a PC, meaning a Windows computer? The answer is no, it will not. It will, however, get that PC online, because after all, part of this is it is a fantastic wireless router. So for that, there's no problem. But if you're looking to back up your PC, we do have another class that we've done on a piece of software called Smartware, and it's actually built into a special kind of hard drive made by the company Western Digital. So what I will do is include a link in the description of the video for where you can find that class. Um, and also, if you go through that class, you should be able to find the hard drive that we recommend for that as well. Uh, the other common question that I do get is, will this back up your iPhone or iPad? And the answer is, sort of, but I really don't recommend using it for that. Here's the reason why. So your iPhone or your iPad can back up through one of two different methods, and you pretty much have to do one of them. You can either back up through iCloud, which is how I recommend it, or you can back up to your computer using iTunes. Now, if you do that, you know, that's all nice and fine, but the problem is this. What if you go on vacation and you drop your phone in a puddle or it gets stolen? If you don't have your computer with you, you can't restore your data. And these days, iCloud data is so inexpensive, it's just better to sign up for even just the 20, uh, 20 gigabyte a month plan, which is $1, um, and just back up wirelessly through iCloud. So if you were in that kind of situation, you smash your phone, whatever it may be, you go to an Apple store, get a new one, punch in your Apple ID, and all of your data comes right back. It's like nothing ever happened uh, until you see your credit card bill, that is. So uh, once you've done that, um, you're good to go. But for now, I want to show you how to set this up from your computer. You can, technically speaking, set up an Apple time capsule from a PC, an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac. That being said, it really only makes sense to do this from a Mac because after all, you're going to be backing up your data, so it's much easier to do it through this method. So next to me on my desk, I have a little time capsule here, so I'm going to walk you through the steps, and here we go. Part one is you need to kill the power to your modem. That would be the little box with the blinky lights on it, as some of you may refer to it. So your modem, you're going to unplug from the wall. Now for some of you out there, you may find that when you do this, the lights do not go out. If that happens, it is an indication that you have something called digital voice. It just means that it is also using that modem for a home phone. So if that's the case, uh, if you look at the bottom of your modem, there's usually a little panel that clips right off. And when you take that clip off, there's a battery sitting right there. Just unplug it. It is important, believe it or not, that you have it off for 60 seconds. There is an actual reason to that number. So um, you want to do that first. And then what you want to do is connect your modem to the time capsule with an Ethernet cable. And if by some miracle of a chance you don't have an Ethernet cable, I will of course include a link in the description of this video. And that connection is going to go from the modem into the last port on the time capsule. There's several different Ethernet connections. It needs to be the one at the very, very bottom, right above where the power cord plugs in. So once you do that, you can power up your modem first, then power up the time capsule. So just plug those both into, uh, into the outlet. Now once you've done that, you're going to need to wait about a good minute, okay, because these things do boot up, just like your computer. And once that's done, here's what you do from the side of the Mac. So if you go up here to the wireless icon at the top right of your Mac, go here and you should see it says Apple Time Capsule, Airport Time Capsule rather. Click on it, and that is going to launch something called the Airport Utility. Should you ever need to come back to this location while this is setting up, I'm going to show you where to go to find that. You're going to go into Finder here at the bottom left corner of your screen. Go into the Applications folder. And at the very, very bottom of this folder, look for utilities. Inside utilities, it's right up top. So there we have airport utility. What I'm going to do is sometimes it takes a few minutes for this to gather the information. So I'm going to pause the video just to save you all time. And when we come back, we'll continue. All right, folks. So it just finished here. And this is going to be the screen that most of you are going to see when it finishes. It's going to say, what do you want to do with your airport time capsule? The answer is create a new network. Uh, so let's hit next. 
while we're here, I might as well mention, um, some of you may be wondering, why would you go with this router over other routers out there? And the answer is, without getting too, too techy, uh, there are different generations of Wi-Fi, and you are better off spending more money on a good initial router than using a less expensive router and then having to use those little boosters. Because those little boosters, every time you add one, you may be gaining uh, more size to your network in terms of if you have a corner in your house where you don't have signal, you can now get online. The problem, though, is every time you use a booster, you're also going to decrease your speed. So you're better off spending a little bit of money and getting a really, really good router, and this is, of course, one of them. Network name, this is what everyone can see, so you can call it, of course, whatever you want. Base station name, okay, you can name that, again, whatever you like. And then it asks you, do you want to use a single password? Now, if you're just a family in doing this for your home, you might as well do this. However, if you are a business, do not use this option, because what that means is that the password that you use to join the network is also the same password you or someone would need to alter the network. So if you are a guest house, for example, this is a bad idea because it means that your guests, if they want to cause trouble, can alter your network. So put in whatever you want. I'm going to do what exactly I tell none of you to do. I'm using the word password just to make this speedy. Now it's going to give me an error message because this right now is not actually plugged into a modem. So just ignore that. So once you've gotten through that, I just did a little editing there, uh, it's going to ask you this question here. And this is where if you are a guest house, uh, as an example, or a business might want to do this too, uh, of any type, it's going to ask if you want to create a guest Wi-Fi network. So it's a dual band network. So these people would not have access to your stuff. They can't even see your computer, frankly. Um, it's just their own little space to do whatever they want. So if you want this option, just check right here. And you can give this network whatever name you want. So I'll just call it guest network. And if you live in a relatively crowded area, you may want to still use a secured guest network. It just means that there's a password. For this, I'll just leave that off. So it means that this is right now an open network. Anyone can get in. Another thing I might as well mention, um, just good information to know. An Apple Airport Extreme or Time Capsule can support 50 simultaneous users at the same time. An Airport Express can only support 10. So if you have a large, let's say a large restaurant, okay, and you may have more than 50 devices on, you may want to get a time capsule and an Airport Extreme if you need to support that many devices. Let's hit Next at this point. It's going to ask if you want to send diagnostics and usage to Apple. Don't they already have enough information on us? Hell no. Hit Next. And that's really it. Now, because this is a time capsule, the next step is going to be to get it to back up all of our data. So right now, it's just kind of setting up the network. Again, this is not connected to the internet, so it's going to probably encounter a little error here, which we're just going to ignore and bypass. Ah, we're done. Great. So now we have, of course, the final step. Uh, and I'm going to actually leave the screen here because there's something else we have to talk about with this, which is getting your data to back up. So once you have your time capsule set up as far as the router portion, now we're going to configure it so that it's your backup as well. Go to the Apple icon at the top of the left corner of your screen. Go here into System Preferences. And at the bottom right corner, you should see Time Machine. Click on that. Turn it on. Okay. Uh, if, now, I have a different Time Machine, so uh, just hit Select Disk. And what it should say is it'll say data and then the name of your network, whatever that may be. And at that point, here's basically an idea of how Time Machine works. The very first backup that you do, it is everything. So expect for it to take potentially a few hours, depending on what kind of uh, connection you have and how much data, of course. So the first backup, it's not just your data. It's the programs. It's the operating system. It's everything, okay? After that's done, what it does is it takes like a little snapshot of your computer every hour if there are changes. So let's say I add 10 photos to this computer, you know, in an hour. When it does the next backup, it's just going to add those 10 photos to the backup. It's basically a catalog system. So what happens is one day, inevitably, when my hard drive, you know, goes bye bye I would take my computer to Apple or an Apple dealership. They would put in a new hard drive. I would also at that time bring them my time capsule. 
and they will restore all of my data and it's like nothing ever happened. Very, very simple. What I'd like to do at this point is give you a few extra little tips and tricks to really help you maximize your use out of what this can do. So the first thing is a little tip for any of you out there who have either a business or if you have a slower internet connection, for example, DSL, um, by comparison to the other options that are out there. So when you're backing up your data, when your computer is automatically checking every hour, it is going to consume memory in your computer in order to do that so that's going to slow you down um, but in general everything's going to be a little bit slower while that process is happening if you're in the kind of situation where you can't afford for that to happen there is a way to alter the time machine software so that it operates and backs up at whatever schedule you want and to do this you need a special piece of software called time machine editor very, very important that you know about this. Do not Google this software. The reason why I always provide you guys with all the links is A, to protect you and also to protect my brand in the process. The bigger part is if you actually Google this software, 90% of what you're going to see on the screen is actually malware posing as if it were Time Machine Editor. So please use the link that I provide you. Um, so this software will allow you to completely customize the backup schedule. Um, so you can tell it to back up either at a certain time, like 2 in the morning, or you can tell it to back up less often, like every 6 hours, as you see in this screenshot. Another link that I have for you is Airport Utility for Windows. Should you want to set up everything that I've shown you today, you need to do this, download this. Again, this is only if you're doing this from a PC. Now, because you're doing it from a PC, you cannot back up your data because that feature is only available for the Mac. But if you're trying to set up either an Airport Extreme or an Apple Time Capsule, uh, you do need to download this software before you disconnect your internet connection. So just be aware of that. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to, I've actually now in editing, I've kind of switched networks so that you couldn't see this. Um, I'm going to show you a few other little features here. And I have to use my real router in order to show you this feature. Now you'll notice on the front of your time capsule or airport extreme, there is a little light and it's either green and green is good, or it may blink amber. Now if it blinks amber, don't panic. It doesn't mean necessarily that there's a big problem. It means usually one of two things. It either means there's no internet connection, which could mean that you are having an outage. It could be a problem with the ethernet cable that's connecting the device to your modem. Uh, it can also be that you have a firmware update. So computers have software and also technically firmware updates, but so does your router. And a firmware update is basically what a software update is when it's for hardware. Okay, so just think of it as they're really the same thing basically. So if that's the case, you will notice that there is a blinking light on your uh, Airport Extreme or Time Capsule. Just go back into Airport Utility click on your device, sorry I'm going to have to blur part of this out for security, and where it says version and it gives you the version number, you will see a little update button. And just click that button, just understand that when you do that it will take down the network temporarily while it's just installing that update, and it's very important when you are anytime, no matter what device, if you are doing a firmware update, you cannot interrupt the process because that can screw up the entire device. So let it do its update, it'll bring back the network, and you're good to go. This is definitely something that's good to check, as I said, every two to six months or so. Final feature that I'm going to show you today is something that I am going to show you with a word of caution. Um, I get asked all the time, you know, can you store files on the time capsule? The answer is yes, but when you have data that's only in one location, it's one location away from being gone. If, though, you still want to do this, here's how you do it. You go into the edit button here, It'll give you all these different settings, go to disks, okay, here at the very right hand side. So at this point you are in fact looking at mine. On the back of the time capsule and airport extreme there is a USB port and in that port you can plug in any USB hard drive. Now for those of you who have a PC, your PC can see this hard drive. You're basically creating network attached storage. For those of you who have heard of the term NAS, that's what it stands for network attached storage. So you can put really anything you want in here. You can put programs, you can put photos. Just again, keep in mind, if it's only in one location, it's one location from gone. So in my case, you can see what I'm using this for, a media server. 
Uh, if you're interested in creating a media server, we have a class that we taught about a year ago on how to create your own media server. You can, of course, find it on our website. Pretty, pretty cool feature, and it plays with Apple TV. So if you want to do that, that's how you do it. So that's all for me today, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this class. Please leave us some feedback. Leave a comment in the section below. Let us know what we're doing right, what we could do better. And let us know what else you want to learn about. This is David A. Cox with PC Classes Online. Class dismissed.